The gaming community has been rather spoilt in recent years. Every time a game on par with Ghost of Tsushima or Hades comes out, it feels like another masterpiece is released five minutes later. And that's barely an exaggeration. 2022's hottest properties, Horizon Forbidden West and Elden Ring came out a week apart. Because of this deluge of awesomeness over the last few years, we really can't keep up. Unfortunately, this creates a problem. Since AAA titles dominate the gaming collective, it's easy to forget everything else that was brought to the table. So if if you're tired of people talking about the same old best video games ever, here's a few that have been painfully overlooked. Also because the games on this list have gone unnoticed, most of them don't cost much, and the only thing better than a great game is a great game that's dirt cheap. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 criminally overlooked recent video games. Number 10. Chasm Thanks to Metroidvanias like Hollow Knight and Dead Cells, the subgenre has exploded in popularity over the past decade. Unfortunately, this surge has oversaturated the market with a boundless buffet of non-linear platformers, making it hard to know which ones are worth a look. So if you're scouring for a new Metroidvania, you can't go wrong with Chasm. At first, it doesn't really look like anything special. The pixelated sprites may look superb and the mechanics are easy to master, but it doesn't appear to boast anything at a glance but there's something lurking deep, deep within Chasm. Because the layout of the world map is randomly programmed, players will get a different experience upon every playthrough. As fun as Super Metroid or Symphony of the Night are, exploration loses its appeal upon repeated playthroughs, since you know where everything is. Thanks to the procedural generation, you can't have this issue with Chasm. Online guides will also prove fruitless since no two players are going to have the same map. As a result, you must be ready to adapt and rely entirely on your own wits and skill to triumph. Number 9. Atari 50 – The Anniversary Celebration Forget about Sonic Origins, Pac-Man Museum Plus, and Mega Drive Classics. Once you experience Atari 50 – The Anniversary Celebration, you'll say to yourself, that's how you do a game compilation. This nostalgic marvel is overflowing with so much content, it feels more fitting to compare it to a museum rather than a game collection. Atari 50 boasts over 100 games, including Centipede, Lunar Lander, Tempest, Asteroids, and Pong. You can play titles from seven different Atari platforms, including the 2600, the Lynx, and the Jaguar. If Atari 50 presented this ensemble and nothing more, most gamers would be satisfied. Instead, the developers went above and beyond by incorporating pretty much anything Atari-related over the last half century. Not only is it filled with an overabundance of games, Atari 50 contains never-before-seen interviews, galleries, an interactive timeline, unreleased prototypes, and remakes of classics like Breakout and Haunted House. But that's not all. Although Sword Quest Air World was cancelled in 1983, a recreation is available here too, just to complete the Sword Quest series. That shows the dedication these developers have to ensuring players get the most fulfilling gameplay experience possible. Not only did Atari 50 give us everything we could have wanted, it showed other companies like Sega and Namco how game compilations should be done. Number 8. Everhood after looking at Everhood for two seconds, you'll assume it's yet another retro 8-bit styled indie trying to be the next Undertale. It even copies the multiple endings depending on how many you kill idea. However, it's hard not to fall in love with Everhood, even if rhythm mechanics aren't your style. Although it wears its influences on its sleeve, Everhood clearly does its own thing when it comes to the enemy encounters. Rather than resorting to a traditional turn-based system, Everhood uses a mix of bullet hell mechanics and guitar hero patterns. Because few games have used this combo, the enemy battles feel delightfully original. Even if you get an Undertale vibe at first, it's sure to dissolve pretty quickly. Unlike Toby Fox's beloved classic, Everhood focuses more on the psychedelic, especially when it comes to the music. The melodies are so otherworldly and catchy, you'll find yourself bobbing along to the beat endlessly. The bosses may be tough, but you always look forward to them, since it's during these confrontations when the visuals and audio go balls to the wall. It may be in Undertale's shadow now, but Everhood is sure to become a cult classic in the near future. Number 7. Katana Zero Thanks to Braid, Deathloop, and It Takes Two, the rewind time mechanic has gotten pretty tiresome. Luckily, Katana Zero handles this gimmick in a way that feels fresh and innovative. Throughout the side-scrolling hack and slash, you play as an assassin who works for a mysterious psychiatrist. While you're slicing and dicing enemies, you can slow down time to dodge attacks or reverse the trajectory of projectiles. Using a premonition technique, you can replay each room immediately after you die, allowing you to quickly memorize and adapt to the enemy's strategies. 
When you clear a room, you'll be allowed to see your killing spree with the mistakes and flaws cut out, making your work look flawless. However, any game can have one good mechanic. What elevates Katana Zero is how the developers fine tune every detail, whether it's the retro graphics, the VHS effects, or the nostalgic chip tunes. Rather than being pure action from beginning to end, Katana Zero never lets you forget about the narrative. After each mission, you learn about our protagonist's life, either through flashbacks, interactions with his neighbor, or discussions with his doctor. Because of the branch dialogue paths and alternate story scenarios, Katana Zero boasts a heavy amount of replayability. Number six, SteamWorld Dig 2. SteamWorld Dig wasn't mind-blowing, but it did well enough to spawn a second installment. This sequel follows the formula of its predecessor. You mine your way through caverns to find ore and resources. However, SteamWorld Dig 2 revamps every factor, whether it's the music, the graphics, or the gameplay. Rather than burrowing through rocks for hours on end like in the original, SteamWorld Dig 2 is filled with elaborate puzzles and self-contained challenges, which stop things from getting stale. Your mission has a personal edge this time around too, since you're seeking out your missing friend. So you're not just looking for resources, you're literally digging for clues to learn of your companion's whereabouts. The difficulty curve is perfectly balanced, since this sequel becomes noticeably harder each time you unlock an upgrade. In other Metroidvanias like Guacamelee or, well, Metroid, you feel so overpowered after obtaining every ability, it removes the challenge a little. But because SteamWorld Dig 2 increases the difficulty proportionately as you acquire new powers, you never get complacent. Thanks to the addictive gameplay, performing side quests and endlessly digging never feels like a chore. When you learn you missed a pathway in a previously explored cave, you don't mind backtracking, knowing you'll discover a new area or unlock a cool upgrade when you get there. Number 5. Moonlighter with randomly generated dungeon crawlers being a dime a dozen nowadays, it's hard for any of them to leave a mark. But Moonlighter adds one key ingredient that puts it ahead of the competition, shopkeeping. To help you navigate through the endless dungeons, you need to equip the strongest weapons and the toughest armor. In order to afford this equipment, you must sell your findings at your store. Now, because most gamers can't see why a dungeon crawler would need to focus on shop management, they can easily be turned off by Moonlighter's premise. But not only is shopkeeping fun, it's the best part of the game. That's not suggesting the rest of the gameplay isn't up to par. Navigating around each dungeon and battling bosses is as entertaining as you'd hope. Because of the charming animations, captivating music, and precise battle mechanics, Moonlighter is a blast. However, the shopkeeping aspect requires the most strategy, since you need to keep adjusting the prices of your goods to get the best deal. When you figure out the right price for each item, you'll be raking in cash, allowing you to upgrade your paraphernalia to the max. The shopkeeping can be so intoxicating, there'll be times where you focus more on running your store than playing the actual game. Number four, Death Store. It's peculiar how Death Store didn't do as well as Tunic, considering they're both isometric action adventures that serve as a love letter to The Legend of Zelda. And yes, while Tunic deserves all the praise that's been lavished upon it, Death Store shouldn't be discarded, since it's just as good, if not better. In this underappreciated gem, you play as a crow tasked with collecting souls. In your quest, you've got to solve puzzles, discover paths, and unlock equipment, such as the bow, the bomb, and the hookshot. Okay, could the developers at least try to hide the fact that they're copying Zelda? Even though the controls are simple, the tight mechanics require a lot of precision, especially when you need to endure enemy gauntlets and boss challenges. The atmospheric score is also so hypnotic you'll absolutely catch yourself humming the melodies from time to time. Even though the subject matter is dead serious, pun intended, some moments will have you bursting into fits of laughter, especially when you see the Swamp King's ludicrous title. Despite there only being three dungeons, Death Store will keep you entertained for a while, thanks to the expansive overworld. And once it's all over, you'll be compelled to revisit it all over again. Number three, Arcade Paradise. Arcade Paradise boasts a whopping 35 retro-styled games, many of which are based on classic arcade titles like Dance Dance Revolution, Bomberman, and Arkanoid. However, you can't access these games at first. The story, yes, there's a story, takes place in a run-down laundromat, which our protagonist is gradually turning into an arcade. In order to afford arcade cabinets, you need to work your butt off by washing clothes, clearing gum, taking out the trash, and cleaning toilets. Yes, the trailer uses the clean the toilets angle to promote the game. 
It might not sound appealing, but managing your business is surprisingly addictive. Because cabinets can only be unlocked by putting the work in, playing them is far more rewarding. I know what you're thinking. Why buy a collection of ripoffs when you can just buy the real thing? I mean, why settle for a bubble bobble clone when you can play bubble bobble? Well, each arcade game has its own unique spin, so it never comes across as a mere knockoff. In fact, some titles are more fun and creative than the game they're emulating. Except Solitaire. That version is just Solitaire. Number two, Chicory, a colorful tale. Due to its oversimplistic aesthetic, you can understand why gamers weren't exactly flocking to play Chicory. Because it centers around a dog with a magical paintbrush, it also sounds a little bit like a ripoff of Okami. But if you give Chicory a chance, you'll realize it's one of the most imaginative titles of the decade. How you use your brush affects everything, from the puzzles to the people you interact with. Each time you unlock a new ability, you want to stop everything and just play around with it. Just as you get comfortable with the gameplay, Chicory will flip everything you thought you knew by introducing new mechanics and sudden tonal shifts. It keeps you on your toes, switching from an adorable adventure to a barbaric bullet hell danger zone in an instant. As wonderful as the design and the gameplay is, it's Chicory's themes that resonate with players. Despite its kiddie look, the game deals with complex topics without coming across as heavy-handed. Although it delves into issues like grief and overworking, it primarily focuses on self-doubt. Because this is a feeling we can all connect with, it allows the story of a cartoony dog with a magical paintbrush to be surprisingly hard-hitting. Number 1. Chained Echoes In a nutshell, Chained Echoes is the best game of 2022 that nobody bought. There are many modern RPGs that emulate the feel of a 16-bit roleplayer, most notably Octopath Traveler. But there's no doubt this Kickstarter-born masterpiece outshines them all. As can be expected, Chained Echoes incorporates elements from every influential turn-based title of the 1990s, including Secret of Mana, Breath of Fire, and Final Fantasy VI. Naturally, the music is magnificent, the world is fun to explore, and the battle mechanics are uniquely imaginative. But Chained Echoes outdoes its competition by being more than a hodgepodge of JRPG cliches. Instead of scratching that nostalgic itch every five minutes, Chained Echoes focuses on the characters and the narrative above all else. Even though a ton of work was put into the side quests and screen-filling bosses, it's the dynamic between your teammates that leaves the biggest impression. Although the story is suitably epic, it's the way that each plotline affects the characters which hits you in the feels. You may not see the appeal of games that prey on nostalgia, and you may have no interest in turn-based roleplayers. But whatever your preferences are, this underrated masterpiece will blow you away. I assure you, Chained Echoes isn't just a must-have, it's a must-play right now. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment box what your picks are for criminally overlooked recent video games. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're liking, come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at JessMcDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.